Little disclaimer guys, this is a Lichtenberg machine. It is super, super dangerous. I know what I'm doing. I know high voltage and I'm a professional. Do not try what you're about to see at home. Hey guys, Hornet King here. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys what happens when you put 3,200 volts from this Lichtenberg machine into this European Hornet's nest. Here's the video, check it out. All right, so I'm gonna preface this again. Do not try this at home. All right, this is just water mixed with sodium bicarbonate. Just paint it on the nest. Make sure that the uh, the leads make contact with the nest. Turn it on. So I've used this Lichtenberg machine that I built out of a microwave transformer to do a lot of wood burning, to put fractals across the wood, sand it down, and then um, clear coat it with a polyurethane to make a really interesting looking piece. So how it works is you, a microwave transformer is the, is the heart of a microwave. What happens is you put 120 volts, when you plug your microwave in, 120 volts comes in through the wall outlet, and then goes into that microwave transformer into the primary winding, and then through the... Um, secondary winding outputs a high voltage which then goes into the magnetron which shoots out the microwaves into your food and excites the water molecules. That excitement of the water molecules practically boils those molecules and creates an extremely high heat within that water and then obviously heats up the food. So that's why you oftentimes will get like hot and cold patches within your food because certain molecules will excite more than others. Anyhow, so when I take out a microwave transformer and I make it into this Lichtenberg machine, I allowed the 120 volts on the input of the primary winding, secondary winding output was outputting 3,200 volts, which is crazy electricity. So when you apply that here to a wood burner, what you're doing is you're mixing up water with sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate acts as an electrolyte, which allows the electricity to pass through it, makes it a conductive material. So water by itself is not conductive. There's a common misconception that water is conductive. It's not. Um, but electrolytes in water are conductive. Therefore, if you have like well water or something, um, that can be conductive because it has natural minerals in it, which can be electrolytes. So in this case, I paint the comb with the electrolyte, and the cellulose from the material, which is technically an insulator, now becomes conductive because of the electrolyte that's within the water. So when I put the two leads onto the cellulose of the comb, it then transfers that electricity, conducts it, and burns the cellulose as the electricity high voltage passes through it. Try that in slow mo.
All right, so this is just a standard piece of maple. So I'm gonna put coat this with the water with the sodium bicarbonate in it, and that'll act as electrolyte so the electricity can pass along the grain in the wood and make contact with the electricity. All right, so what you're seeing here too, um, when the electricity passes through this piece of wood, through the grain um, and the electrolyte and burns the wood, the small little, almost looks like lightning strike pieces, those are called fractals. And fractals are basically when the cellulose inside the wood burns and chars and you see all these very fine hairs um, that extend out from the each electrode. The electrodes that I made are actually made out of angled pieces of copper that are plated in nickel. And it works really well because it doesn't char nearly as much as just straight copper would. And also doesn't allow it to oxidize as fast. When you put moisture to copper and electricity through it, it starts to oxidize. So nickel doesn't do that quite as much. It's kind of a pretty low oxidating metal. So the shocking sound that you hear as the electricity goes through and actually it seems like it connects is where it creates an easy path from one electrode to the other and shorts itself out. So that's that bzz, bzz noise that you're hearing. So this particular shot here, you can see the, the different um, fractals coming towards each other, which this is one of the better, this is actually what you want the wood to look like. You want these fractals to happen. They're very, very fine fractals. Um, so this is what I always aim for when I'm putting the electrodes on, and it's trial and error to get them to connect that way and get them to form those fractals very, very fine like that. So this is the damage that was done on the comb. It doesn't look like much, but it burned through pretty good there. You can It's very, very, very delicate um, and just like charcoal. Uh, this is the piece of wood, and you can see the very, very high fractals that are on there. Very, very pretty um, and fine fractals. So I just take a piece of sandpaper and I sand that down and get most of that black soot off and expose the very, very fine fractals within the grain. Well, look how awesome that looks. It looks like lightning strikes across there, which is funny because that's technically what made it, was lightning strikes. So you can see in some of those spots, the, um, the char is really, really deep. It's like halfway through the wood. Um, and unfortunately, you have to get some of those spots to get the really fine fractals at the end, um, which is what I aim for when I do this with wood burning. And then I coat it with a polyurethane, a very, very thin, polyurethane finish. It's a spray finish so you don't get any brush strokes. And it seals up the fractals but it also keeps that soot from being transferred onto the surface when you wipe your hand across it when it's dry. So I would make this into tabletops. I've made them into um, cup coasters and made like little crate holders for them. Um, I've made them all kinds of different things. And the it's always unique because each piece this is unique from one to the other. You can never get the same fractal twice. This is a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm a professional. I know high voltage. I built this Lichtenberg machine. Do not try what you see at home. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for future videos, something you'd like to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments. Let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below. That way you guys can get an update anytime I do post a video. If you guys are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for tuning in to check out my videos, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.